In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how you can split a lower third and move it off the screen in two pieces to reveal text behind it. I saw this in a commercial and thought it'd be fun to see how we could do this in PowerDirector. So please look at the following example, and then we'll show you a bit about how to do this yourself. On the screen, I have an image. It could be a video as well. And then we want to focus on the idea of saving money. So we want the lower third to reveal the text save money by splitting into two pieces. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to go to my color boards to create my lower third. So I click and expand the panel on the left side and I'll click on color boards. And in PowerDirector 36520, I have the option of gradient. I'll choose that one and take a gradient, drag it down and put it on track number three. Then I want to set the time of it. We're going to set a time for, let's do 15 seconds. I just hit it in the time code, press enter. That's more than enough. So what I'd like to do now is change the gradient and change the size. So we're going to make it smaller. We're going to move over here above our text and make sure it's about the same place where our text is. And in this case, I only need it to be just slightly larger than half the screen. So move over here, make sure it hits the pink line in the middle. It can be a little longer, that's fine. And I'll take my arrow key and move it up a bit. Okay, so now I have it at least half the size of the screen. The next thing I want to do is take this gradient and do some keyframing on it. But before I do that, I need to set some timing. So to set timing, I like to use timeline markers. The easiest way to set a specific marker is to click on the key code below the preview screen and type in the time you want. Here I'll use one for two seconds and zero frames. I type in the values, hit enter. And then when my playhead's there, I'll right click on it and do add timeline marker. And here I want to say invisible because it will be invisible there. And we'll show you how to get there in a moment. Then I want to set another one. Let's say we want to do four seconds. Hit four, press enter, right click again, add timeline marker, now I'll type visible. Now I want to set two more. I'll set one at five seconds, press enter. And here I want, I'm going to set one with a right click again. I'll call this one stable, click okay. And we'll do one at seven seconds right click, add timeline marker, and I will call this one moved. And it's moved off the screen. So I have them set. I will actually be able to see them when I do some editing. So I'm going to double click on my gradient, which will be my left half of my lower third. Go to the first marker, and I want to set a scale value. I'm going to turn off maintain aspect ratio, and I'm going to set the scale. Well, I want to go to the second one first, because that's where I want it to be full size. And I want the scale here to be exactly what we see on the screen. So I'm going to set a scale position value by clicking the diamond. And then I go back to the first one. And now I'm going to set a scale value with zero height. Dial it back as far as I can go. So what will happen will be when we move between these areas, it will expand. We'll go from nothing and we'll see it become visible. Then I want it to move off the screen. So I'm going to go to my third timeline marker, click there. And this time we don't mess with scale, we work with position. It's going to start out where it is right now. I'll click the diamond, go to the last one, and we're going to slide off the screen. Now I need to take note of my Y value. It's 743. I'm going to drag it off the screen. And here again, I'm going to type over to make this a 743 to make sure it's horizontal and how it moves. And click on OK. So now when I play this, we're going to see half of my lower third come on the screen, widen out to something, and then move off. OK, that works good. I need to duplicate that, so I'm going to click on it, right click, and do copy. We'll go with my playhead on the left side over to 5. I could do 5 or 3. Right click and do a paste. And now we're going to change the keyframes on this one. Let's double click. We'll get into the editor. 
I don't want to mess with the first two keyframes because I want this to expand, but when I get to the third one, it's on the wrong side of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to take it and drag it to the right. Make sure we're at 743 for my Y value. Press Enter. And that one's set. Now the other thing I need to do about it is I need to rotate it 180 because we're going to go from dark to light on both sides. Then what I want to do is go to the last keyframe value, click this one, and we need to move it, but it moved in the wrong direction. So we're going to take it and we're going to slide it off the screen to the right. I want to make sure my Y value is 743, so I've edited that. So when I'm done, I click on OK. We have our color board appearing as one unit. And it spreads out and it discloses my save money promo in the very middle. So that's a way in which you can take those tools and split a lower third to reveal the text behind it.